morning, Max. Life is good. Life is good. You should not be asking me. I should be asking you. That's your turn to say to tell a story, and usually, it's not a positive one. So yeah, it's not a positive one, and and this, but this one has some fun for me, or our discussion because I'm now going to talk to a Parisian about 1960s rock and roll. Oh, so this this will bring a little bit of extra. Um, I went to see John Fogarty, who was from a band called Credence Clearwater Revival, a little while ago, which I'm sure you've never heard of, but um, resonates so <laughs> deeply in my soul. Um, You've probably heard the song Proud Mary, more likely from Ike and Tina Turner than from Credence, but that was their song. There's, there's, you might have heard a couple of their songs. But um, we have a group of friends that we go to concerts with together. There's this beautiful venue. If you're ever out here and there's a concert, we'll go um, called, I won't get into the name of it, but it's small. It's on a winery. It's just, it's just an awesome place to see a show. Um, so... This was a band I've never seen, and it's it's really just one guy from the band. He's 76 years old, but he's still amazing, it turns out. Um, and so we have this group, but there were eight people who wanted to go to this particular concert. You can only buy six tickets at a time. So one of the guys in the group got six. I said, well, I'll get the other two. And then another couple went, so I, I was on the hook to get four tickets. Um by the time I got around to ordering the tickets, it was sold out. So I had to go to an aftermarket ticket company, ordered the tickets, you know, four months ahead or something like that. About two weeks before the concert, I'm like, okay, how do I get my tickets? So the first thing I had to do is remember the name of the company I ordered the tickets from and find the email from them with the instructions on how to get the tickets. And at least, thank God, I did this a couple of weeks in advance. Um, well, it turns out that the company had been acquired by another company. So I ended up having to look for a company name I'd never heard of before uh, to find the email to tell me about the tickets. So eventually I figured that out. Um, and then I went to log in and it was the same login process and the same password. Uh, but I, I couldn't get the login for it. And I went through the re-login process and the change your password, could not get through it. Absolutely had to have a human. So you'd be very happy to know they had chat on the website. There you go. So I put in, and I, I literally, this was so frustrating. I saved a copy of this. Um, well, so when you, when you put on your glasses, it's getting serious here. Yes, yes. The question from the chat bot. For an update on your order status, please log into the your account. There you can see information, delivery dates, order summary, etc. My response, I can't log into my account. For an update on your order status, please log into your account. It literally gave me the same thing back telling me to log in when I wasn't able to log in. So I went through and it there was no human behind the chatbot. It was purely a chatbot. I went all over this thing. I went to the acquiring company's website three or four different places there, no phone number to call. The only thing I could find was, was this chat bot. Um, so I found, and I, I found the chat bot on two or three different places, but it was the same one, all equally useless. Um, finally, I found some information in an FAQ. So I got to the point where I, I got to, I'm, literally I got to the page to change the password. And when I put in the password change request, it came back with a 404 error, or that may be the wrong number. It was a 40 something error. There are several reasons why this could have occurred, including uh, submitting invalid data, clicking too quickly. Please help, please identify this to our help page. There's an I IP address and a request ID that's a alphanumeric 30 digit thing that I'm supposed to somehow send to them. And the only thing I could find was a chat bot. <laughs> so I, I looked around and I finally found a, a, another place that said chat with us. And I clicked on that one and I finally cracked the code. I found the one that got to a human 
uh, agent. It was, it, 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 there were like 40 people in the, in the queue ahead of me. And I ended up having, I forget, I was talking to somebody, I had a very long conversation with somebody. The nice thing about chat is when you're in the queue, if it shows you it counting down, you can be on the phone, you can do other stuff. So that was actually really nice. I got a lot done. I finally got to uh, the chat, the chat, the person. And I said, you know, I can't log into my account. It seems to think I'm a bot, which the message made me think. Um, I copy and pasted the message. I put it in the chat. Three seconds later, if you're on a PC, please turn your VPN off. Turn my VPN off. Everything worked great. So it was a very simple, very specific problem. And it took me literally days. This this whole thing was, you know, a, a multi-day process going through this, hours at a shot. And four, four people are waiting for their, you know, fortunately. And, you know, I started this two weeks ahead. And, of course, it went over time. It was two days before the concert before I got this all. And I'm starting to think, you know, okay, I'm going to have to tell my friends, okay, I'm going to eat the cost of the tickets and we're not going to get to go. Uh, but it did work out. We did get to go. The show was wonderful. A 76 year old man will only jump about this high off the ground at the end of a song. But <laughs> other than that, the show was picture perfect, everything you could have dreamed of. So that was that was my experience. There's a lot the to unpack here. Uh, yeah, there is. There is a so lot let's, to let's, analyze. Let's, let's analyze this, shall we? Okay. So, okay. Let me try to think where to start. First, the first thing that came through my mind as you were telling the story was, oh my God, that happened in a winery. Last time you went in a winery in France, it cost you like the price <laughs> of the entire trip. <laughs> Um, I was wondering, are you going to buy the guitar, the official guitar of the of the lead singer or whatever? But good, that didn't cost that much. So let's analyze it a little. So there is an obvious chatbot fail, a major one, because anyone yeah. who is in the CX industry knows that two things about chatbots. First, make it super clear what they can and cannot do for you so that there is no disappointment. And second, always have an escape. Uh, human handover or uh, if I can help you click here contact form phone number whatever but just don't loop it in over and over again that's just building people's anger yes. uh, so, so that's the first very very obvious one second on what planet do you absolutely need to log in into something to access something you purchased already? They sent you an email at some point so why don't you have the tickets in the email or why don't you have a link where you just click to get the tickets. Why do you even need to log in in the first place? Because I'm guessing you're probably not the only person on earth who's lost the login password or here that's not was not even the case, but that yeah, would be the comment. Uh, that given that this you know this seventy five hundred dollar ticket is the QR code, I get that they're protecting that carefully actually. That that's okay. So the, the, that's so let, let I, let's I let, let's leave this one. Fair enough. Um, the, the the fact that it took you so long to find your to to reset your password makes me think. Did did they never see that? Usually, people say I lost my password just under the login stuff. Why do you have to search into FAQs and chatbots to get that? They had that. I, I forget how that broke down. I tried to do that, and that broke down. I couldn't do it, and mm -hmm. um, it, that's what forced me into all this hell. I forget but, the detail of that stuff. And, but, but that's like basic expectations, right? If if you want to drive a car and they hide the steering wheel in the trunk, the people will have problems because they're not used to that. You need to have the basic stuff in place. You can be as yeah. fancy as you want with the rest. But, um, and then there is a company change, a company acquiring another one. It's always messy. It's always difficult. I understand that. Uh, but you need to make sure that the existing customers are not... <laughs> You know, I got lost in the process. That was a yeah, gigantic that, mess. That was a, yeah, the, the word cluster comes to mind. It, it, that was horrible. And then the last one, the last one I see here is, well, it's a mix of two things. It's why is it so difficult to find the information, but also why do you force people to remove their VPN? How 
how critical is that? And if it's that critical, then why don't you just announce it or make it clear or detect it? Or if that's that important for your business, then you should detect it or you should you should have something for people to find out. A, a message other than please please tell me your your IP address and request ID and yeah that this was a completely worthless message it could have said you know we're having trouble um if you have a vpn please turn it off yeah having that right there i would have figured i would have i would have gone oh of course and done that immediately but that's incredible yeah. so well there's a lot here um but i'm i'm sure what did you see there what is there anything else you would add to that so the only other point I want to make is on one level, I, I want to give them a little bit of sympathy. I still hate them. I want to be very clear about that. But I do have a modicum of sympathy for them because think about being in the concert ticket business in the year, you know, this all happened last year. So in the year 2021 and trying to survive that and now concerts are restarting you've had no revenue for a year and suddenly you've got a crush of people with questions and all these things i mean all the more reason to get your chatbot right but i do understand you know they were completely undermanned i mean they had you know and i have sympathy for that but on the other hand there were messages like do not that actually I, there was a phone number i did try to call it but it was a, a very very long wait and they had messages that said things like do not call us unless it's within three days of your concert which, which is just so, uh, unbelievable I, for once i'm going to be the bad cop here uh i'm sorry this is completely unacceptable it has been so that was last year right so it probably was yeah. 18 months into the pandemic roughly um 18 months into the pandemic, you have plenty of time to figure out what's wrong with your system. Um, 18 months into the pandemic, end of 2021, internet was not invented the day before. They, they had <laughs> 21 years to figure this out. Well, I, uh, I, I, okay, let me, let me clarify my thinking on this. Um, until fall of 2021, maybe summer, uh, they had no business. They had no phone calls. And then all of a sudden things started and they started getting a crush of them again. So on that level, there, there, there was, it wasn't 18 months. It was just a couple of months. Yeah. Still think but about I, I, again, I hate them. I, I agree. I, I, but I, think I, about I, a restaurant or a bar. If you have only two waitresses, you're not going to accept 500 customers. You're going to gate right. it so that everyone get the right level of service. And that's understandable. But if I let you buy something, I need you to get the service you deserve. I can't accept the money from everyone and say, sorry, we don't have enough staff. That, right, that's not acceptable. You. Yeah, that's, exactly. You're right. You're right. Okay. I, I, I now feel better about hating them. I, so, I don't think don't that excuse at all anymore. So what should they learn from that? If there were a couple of things they, we should take out of this story, what, what would that be? So I, there were some very low cost things that could have made a huge difference. A better form of password reset, better error message when I got to the VPN problem, and an actually helpful chat bot. None of that requires hiring 100 agents. All of that is an investment, but not, a, you know, we're, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars or something like that all should have been very manageable. Actually, uh, a helpful chatbot is, is a stretch because very few companies figured it out properly yet. But at the very least, a non, uh, a chatbot you don't want to kill. So uh, at least a chatbot that says, well, all right, you've tried three times already. Obviously, I'm not getting it. So this is a phone number. This is a contact form. This is, right. you know, a chatbot that does not drive you crazy is a minimum requirement, I would say. Yeah. I would and and one that does not put you in an infinite infinite loop like I I fell into there was just unbearable. Well, they 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 have a few months before the 77th concert. Uh so let's let's hope they fix it by then. 
it was a pleasure talking to you. I hope you feel slightly better, but you had the concert, so I'm guessing you feel better anyway. I, um, I do. And the concert, the concert was wonderful, and with any luck, I'll never have to buy tickets from that company again. I wish you that much. I will talk to you next week, Max. Thank you so much for your time, and have a beautiful week. All right. Thanks, Julian. Great to talk, and I feel better. Thank you. Bye. Bye.